minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a quick, uh, that'd be, man, we'd have to be getting paid some good money to be under 30 minutes, you know, like that, that'd be t- like, that'd be a tough task, you know? So, yeah, we'd have to be very efficient. Yeah. And that's something we are, you know, if you look at reviews, <laughs> not, not efficient. Okay. So we're live now. If anyone's watching, we're on the starting soon part. So I'm going to link it up so if you have anything to say or talk to the people kirkland you can before we start this review here as i share it to the interwebs the world what's going on uh today's a big day because i'm finally going to be able to enjoy death stranding for my ps5 (laughs) very very excited for that um Mm -hmm. and yeah i've like barely scratched the surface on the game don't even really remember much of the story from when i played it that's good experience so you get to start from scratch right Yeah, yeah yeah exactly you haven't even booted it up, have you? No, I've bought it and just looked at it. <laughs> yeah, I've done it's, the same. Yeah, um, so I, I can... want I want to very badly. This weekend I want to, but there's Adam's Family is out the new one, Hotel Transylvania, oh, yeah. uh, Free Britney or Britney versus... There's, TV's just popping off, but... It uh, is. This is a big month. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't even watched the first two episodes now, three episodes to more of the morning show, so... Oh, that's right. The... Jeez, what day is it today? Today's Thursday. I'm all thrown off. Yeah, Yeah. um, yeah, I'm excited for that. Typically, we've been watching either that or Ted Lasso at nine on Thursdays, Mm -hmm. but Shay works tonight, so it's unfortunate, but it allows me to just stay up all night and play Death Stranding. So there you go. There you go. (laughs) Yeah, I I will do the same. Are you gonna? You're probably gonna load like reload your save eh, from Death Stranding. Oh, of course. I I can't restart that whole story. I do not have that time, sir. You know, that's that's a big commitment there. But uh, because I'm I'm assuming with your loaded one, you're just gonna have like those DLC areas open. I think that's what it is. It's not really DLC, I guess. Like the direct missions. They're called missions. Okay, there you go. That's what Hideo's calling them. So, you ready to do this, sir? Absolutely. Are you talking about that Venom? 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 (laughs) Eminem. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Venom Let There Be Carnage Spoilers Review. I, I'm a terrible. I didn't even put that in the title of the video. It's just Venom Spoilers Review. Just, so I am the someone by Sony Trust now. And while I fix the title, I'm joined by the Lethal Protector, Kirkland Patzer. There we go. So we have both seen Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and I'm killing time as I change the video title. Boom, look at that. No one ever knows. So we're changing it. So if you're watching live or if you do in the future, you might be like, why are they just on Twitch? Well, in a week or two, we put out our survey and we got tons of responses and we're going to talk about we're going to be doing a town hall and we're going to be talking about some of them and some of the changes going to Geek First. We got like a whole game plan for 2022. So we want to share you in on, on how you can help, but also just uh, things to look forward to. So we will address that in the near future. If you're listening to audio, nothing's different. You're going to get ad warnings. You're going to get great goodness for me and Kirkland. Hopefully uh, I think you're going to get an interesting review. Just follow us on Twitter, or Facebook for uh, updates because the next month or so we're just popping off. We got bond coming up. We got a bond retrospective. We got Dexter coming up. We got DC fandom. We have our charity stream, which I'll, what is it? Uh, next week, you're going to get full details. On the 6th, I'm going to drop a cast as far as uh, giving some kind of news of what to expect. Kirkland, you ready to uh, defend that sports title? I'm, I'm ready to be the first ever three champion, triple crowd champion <laughs> for history. You know, tag title, world title, sports title. Coming home to daddy, you know? that's. What's I mean, I'm already happen. the longest reigning sports champion, so I don't really know where I have else to go on this other than just keep defending and retaining the, the longest ever sports yeah. champion but yeah we'll see what happens <laughs> we'll see we'll see we got lots of other stuff uh yeah and just go back to the tons of podcasts and most importantly head over to patreon because you can get ad free early exclusive episodes and also a whole bunch of tears a whole bunch of perks after nine recommend us to review a movie watch a movie with us but most importantly the more support we get there the more content we make that's going to be part of the town hall so you guys are funding and pushing us forward it's kind of crazy i don't know why it's just like Check out our podcast network. They officially, they've five months in a row have had their biggest month. So five months, boom, boom, boom. Same thing for us, but we're on seven months. And you guys are just, like I said, crazy animals. Because last month was our biggest month. And we had a 54, Kirkland, a 54% growth from last month to this month for our biggest month. So just that a is- big... That's mind yeah. blowing. <laughs> yeah, almost as big as this movie. But no, it's a big thank you to everybody. So we we're making some moves. We got some good plans. 
But you know who also has plans is uh, I think Sony, and I'm sure they plan to. Also, we got Morbius coming up. We got Spider Man coming up. Maybe we got more Venom coming up. Who knows? Uh, so we got lots to talk about. We're gonna talk about this movie as always. We're gonna do non spoilers. We're gonna spoilers. We're gonna save the end credit for last, and uh, I think we're gonna have lots to talk about there. So Kirk Compatzer, you and I have not talked about this movie at all. Then we've just acknowledged that we have seen it. We both saw it at 4 p.m. That kind of worked out, so it was nice. So where are what are your thoughts on uh venom 2 and if anyone's curious you could go back last week they did a venom predictions episode so you see what they got right or wrong and also if you want to hear a review on the first venom that's also back in the feed so before all that you can go listen to that to get Kirkland's thought on that but what are your thoughts on this the 2021 venom let there be carnage <laughs> yeah so um I, i'd say the biggest difference from this one and the first one for me is just like my expectations are just totally different um like the biggest positive i had for taking out of the first one was like the look of venom and the symbiotes i thought it was just it was just awesome to see them on live action and like actually looking good um mm-hmm. i guess my comparison would have been like spider-man 3 topher grace's spider uh venom not my venom <laughs> you know I, I i like them nice and bulky and looking just jacked so that was probably like my biggest positive takeaway from the first one because like Mm -hmm. majority of the comedy just didn't really work for me and a lot of the comedy and like situational humor with venom and eddie which is just like threw me off because i just wasn't expecting it so going into this one it's like okay i i kind of know what to expect and definitely same sort of humor and everything so like if you really didn't like the humor in the first one i don't think it's this one's gonna be a big switch for you like it was for me like there's definitely some moments that made me chuckle majority of them was just like i can't believe this is happening on screen right now but nonetheless um did anything there... top the tater tots moment though from the first <laughs> one um because that was i still think the most wildest shit i've ever seen in a comic book movie movie <laughs> it, like when I that happened close i think close <laughs> Maybe yeah. just because it's not like fresh in my mind. I didn't just rewatch like Venom before this one. Um, oh, so I kind of forgot shame. about that scene. <laughs> um, I, I had enough of it in my memory to remember, <laughs> you know, how we got to this one. Yeah. But uh, there's definitely a couple that I'm going to shout out that are just so ridiculous that I had to just take a note of it. Uh, but they're like, all in all, I because I didn't have high expectations, I, I think I enjoyed it enough that I wasn't just like, I can't believe this is this is happening right now like i i wasn't checking my watch like i do sometimes in movies it's just like how long left in this movie i think the mm-hmm. run time definitely helped it because this one was only an hour and a half whereas the second or the first one rather was like two hours 20 so like almost Something a whole like that, hour yeah. longer and i think the runtime helped it there were still some moments that i'm like oh they should have just cut this out this could have been a little bit shorter but um all in all there was there's some some bright moments like with carnage um <laughs> I think I was like pretty worried going into this one with Carnage, especially like with Woody Harrelson being Cletus. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, it might have been a bad thing, but I was just like, I don't think this is going to work. So you always want to go into a movie with like as as neutral as possible, I believe, because then you're just, you're not having, (laughs) I don't know, uh, unnecessary expectations or something. Um, But all in all, I think there was still enough good moments in it revolving Carnage and very few moments for being cletus that i really really liked um i don't know i'm excited to just talk about specifically spoiler section about the characters mm-hmm. and stuff but all in all i i don't think it was like a worse movie than the first one i think it was like equal amounts the same of the first one um so it's not like a major step down but I mean, once we get into spoilers, we'll obviously talk about a big thing that happens near the end. But I, I'm just really excited, like going forward with how this movie ended. Uh, but I, I think that's pretty much all I'll say uh, for now. Like the comedy was pretty similar to the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like I said, I think the runtime helped it this time around, but it was still pretty similar to the first one. Well, I'm I'm glad you got some positive stuff to say because I, <laughs> <laughs> I. There, so here's the thing. I'll I'll just preference and say this that I will be a little harsh on this movie, but I would like to say this because I first of all we got some review a long time ago. I can't remember what it was. I think it was for an episode of Falcon Winter Soldier and people, someone whether it was a review or something, messaged just like, well, you know, I just really like listening to reactions of shows because I just love that positivity and I just want to <laughs> hear good stuff about the shows and just like. I'm not trying to deliberately like shit on stuff or anything. This is just always going to be a show where if we don't like something, we're going to talk about it. But I also want you to know if you completely enjoy this, 
that's okay. That's fine. You know, it, that's the way it is. It's just how I feel. I feel there like this confirmed all my suspicions as far as we did Godzilla versus Kong earlier this year. And obviously that took about three, whatever, four movies to realize that. But this one I've realized much sooner. And I think it's just because I know Sony and just like what their plans are. I think just as I was watching this, I just went, you know what? These just are not for me. Now, I'm still going to be watching these movies because I'm a sucker and I like to watch comic book property because, like I've said before, there's a time in my life where none of this has happened. You know, like uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, tra- tell Travis Snell you're going to watch a Carnage vs. Venom movie. I'm sure I'm super pumped, right? So um, I, I think this one... I don't know to not sugarcoat it. I think it's like an embarrassing movie. I do not like this movie at all. I, and some people are going to be like, but there's so many worse ones for me. I guess the reason why I might say it's like a bottom top 10 comic movie for me, is just because the air we're in what we've had, the humongous talent that you have in here between Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, Naomi Harris, Michelle Williams, just what they choose to do with these people and the talent they have, and even any circus directing, I'm just baffled of like, why are we doing this now? And the first one I said before, I had a great experience in the theaters. And then as I, you know, got to the end of it, wasn't liking it. And then as I rewatched, it's gone less and less. This one, I definitely did not have that. And it's funny because like the theaters are less full now because of COVID restrictions and whatnot. But like it was the last one we saw was just like a raucous crowd this was pretty dead silent the whole time so i i really am curious what this would have done in a normal world i feel like it doesn't have the same type of charm as the first one because i feel like they're trying very hard to make like it's carnage and it's whore and he's really violent and stuff like that so when they go back to the charm for me it just doesn't really work and most of the humor doesn't work i feel like if you liked the first one then you're definitely gonna like this because yeah. it has that i don't it <sighs> <laughs> what you liked they do times two in this one i like in the biggest non-spoiler way i can say like if you like the eddie and uh venom dynamic then you're set because they just go ham in this one there's one moment where it's eddie having a conversation with cletus but literally it'll be he says something cletus says something and then venom says something and this is like a solid three minute scene and it's that rotation every time and it's just venom cracking jokes and i swear because i see some people on my timeline if you like this movie or you get really excited and you want to defend it but you're not an mcu fan you just gotta fuck right off because like the <laughs> amount of humor they try to go for in this movie in my opinion unsuccessfully but like it's so like it's just like a joke. Like there's a joke all the time. And I guess for me, cause they're not hitting, I guess I understand why some people that don't like the humor Marvel movies must feel all the time. But for me, it's just like, I don't know. It's just, and there's other small, I guess thoughts I have spoilers to say, but yeah, I just, I guess I just feel in 2021, the quality of comic book stuff we have going on right now. And then when this comes out, it's just more disappointing. Uh, Woody Harrelson's awful in this movie. He's just awful. He's just like, I don't know why he had this idea to play the character this way. He does not come off scary as all as Cletus. Naomi Harris, who is an Oscar nominated actress. We just talked about her in Skyfall. She is wasted. She is wasted in this movie. You could have just got some, you know, red hot supermodel to do this role. Like there's no, like, I don't understand other than maybe she had a good payday. It sucks because I feel like Tom Hardy is legitimately trying. Like, I don't think he's phoning in. I just don't like what he's trying. Um, yeah, this movie, it, it's just th- this Sony versus not for me. It's not. I don't think I'm going to like it. I hope Morbius is some sort of surprise. I do think Morbius won't have this type of humor. But at the same time, they didn't show that with the first trailer of Venom. We got that. But I just do feel like it's going to be serious. So hopefully. But I just uh, I don't know. It's I, I am not a fan of this movie. I th- this you said it was an hour and a half. And thank God it was because this <laughs> felt like a three hour movie for me. It was a long hour and a half of just constantly not enjoying it the plot points are just very quickly ran through there's things they just throw at you they never pick up it's just uh i don't it, it like it's an hour and a half movie but it definitely feels like it's a two hour movie that they said hey can you get down to an hour and a half because we move just so quickly and it's not a good thing and also like and this is just because sometimes hyperbole and stuff like that but so many people i'd seen like describe the movie as like uber violent not at like carnage it looks cool he does some cool stuff but like i did not like watching this and be like oh my goodness like i remember in infinity war when they had like the outriders when they were like breaking through the uh that force field and they're like limbs were getting cut off and there's all this blood mm-hmm. like oh this is really gross for like like for a pg-13 kind of family I'm like man this is real i didn't get any of the sense of that in this that so i feel like 
you know, we always kind of harp on it like the internet does it, like, oh man, I wish this could be Ray R. But that was one of the moments where I was like, man, like Carnage is doing some stuff. And yeah, he looks cool. I think there's some good like fights that they do have. Mm-hmm. I think it does help that you can distinguish them because that was always my biggest problem with yeah. Riot, you know? So I, I think that was good. If you were just to say, hey, some fan has made a 10 minute like fan film of them fighting that would be great it's just all the other stuff that kind of is around yeah. it and uh and i don't think there's there's enough of the the best fighting to make me be like man this is really good so yeah and uh, if i'd recommend it same thing if you like the first one yes if you didn't like the first one definitely not but if you're like us you're probably just going to see these because you're interested it does create some things going forward in this universe um i'm trying to think if there's anything else there is like a a, a good size like end credit scene which we'll talk about but i think for nonce was yeah i uh i would say this is probably my least favorite movie i've seen in the theaters this year there's movies i rank below it that i saw at home but in the theaters this was a tough experience i'm glad gwen because gwen found out i was seeing venom and she talked herself into because at first i thought it might be too scary but she was mm-hmm. a champ got through it but uh thank goodness i did bring her because at least i had some fun <laughs> with her watching and whatnot but uh yeah, I, I I don't have much to say, but I'm interested to talk about spoilers because there is some wacky stuff in here. So you got how anything did, else? Oh, go ahead. How did Gwen like it? Uh she so like with Sung Chi, because I think it was longer, there she had higher highs in that where some stuff would happen. She looked back and be like, Oh, this is crazy. But then there's times where she's like, Okay, I'm ready to go home and stuff like that. But where oh. this she never she only said that at the beginning, but at, n- at no point in the film did she ever be like, Wow, this is like really happening and stuff like that. So she said <laughs> yeah. she liked Sung Chi better. So yeah, there you go. That's, that's a fair <laughs> review. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted the review of a four-year-old, she recommends see Sung Chi over Venom. And it's still in theater, so you can go ahead and go do that. So yeah, uh, I think the last thing I would say, just like yeah. non-spoilery, is uh kind of what you were mentioning with like the fight scenes and stuff. I it made me think of like the last movie, and I think everything I liked about that movie was kind of what I liked in this movie. Like yeah. obviously they're in different situations, but so like that just probably is a further example of like if you like the first movie you'll probably like this one and if you didn't like the first movie you'll probably not like this one because they are very same you know like with the comedy yeah. the action which i did like from the first one i did like the action in this one so um that'll probably be like the last spoiler free thing i would say yeah it's funny because on after nine we talked about like oh what's it gonna be like and i remember maddie is like well it's probably just gonna be more of the same and that's pretty much what <laughs> yeah. it was because like and that's the thing where like it, it's so funny because people when the MCU and like it's whether you think it's a good thing or bad thing they always talk about how like, there's like a formula right and some people think that's a bad thing that the directors don't have enough input and then some people go against and say no they get lots of input whatever you want to say there is a formula where they say hey we want to make the movie this way you come in to give it some spice to me it doesn't feel any different than the first one like directing wise you know like it doesn't feel like oh man this is a shift whether it was even like I think they definitely doubled down and did some more wackiness but not so much where what I was was really hoping because I, I think this one has gotten better reviewed i was hoping for this to be similar to malignant where it leans into it so much that eventually you're just in on the joke and i think that's the problem with this movie that they they kind of go back and forth where sometimes it feels like they're trying on purpose to be like kind of laugh at us in a way but then they get like really serious and like oh you're supposed to take this serious now like this is like a comic book movie and there's high drama i wish it was just like malignant where it's just like the first five minutes you know oh this is super cheesy and super over the top and we're gonna embrace it and you know and i guarantee you some people do feel that way about this the same way some people don't feel about malignant where they go no that's just an excuse and if you feel that way that's great i guess i just don't feel that with denim i don't feel like it's i feel some stuff's intentional but i feel like it's still them trying to make a comic movie that has lots of humor in it and not them saying look we're a b-rate movie which i feel like they should do but you know alas we're here and i don't know we'll have to see how this movie does and i i imagine they'll they'll make more you know it's venom he, yeah. he should in COVID. it i think like it would have made less money in the first one but it would have made a good chunk but okay so your non spoilers are done i'm done so we're gonna throw it our first ad break so we're gonna see how this works because we're on twitch and there's gonna be an ad break on there so we're gonna be 30 seconds legitimately kirk and there's gonna be an ad break for us on the video but i don't know how this works on stream yard so we're doing a whole test so we're gonna be right back and we're gonna get into full spoilers so if you've not seen it if you're waiting because we know it's only theaters exclusive i guess like kirkland you would recommend it like you kind of said to the people that enjoyed the first one yeah yeah exactly yeah. okay so we'll be right back and then we're getting into spoilers Go for a little walk. <laughs> well, I guess you and I can talk. Yeah, because for 20 seconds, it's, sh- it's showing an ad. That's a good thing. You and I can talk. No one knows mm-hmm. we're talking right now. So that's funny. So, 
you go for a little walk yeah well this will be good in the future when we do our fandoms and stuff like that when we'll yeah. have, um we'll actually need bathroom breaks and stuff like that yeah, so exactly <clears throat> all right we got five seconds <clears throat> oh clear the throat and we're back so kirkland pats are where do you want to start with this movie yeah so there's like the big end credit thing that's i feel like that's the biggest part of this movie do you want to just do that later or do you want to do that right now and like, yeah let's the, do that it's, 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 yeah okay or are you are you just frothing out the mouth to talk well because i feel I, like here's my opinion i feel like we're going to talk about the end credits scene more than the movie <laughs> yeah no exactly and like when i when i sat down i went and saw this with a buddy and i sat down like there's a big end credit scene i haven't seen it or anything i didn't like look up any rumors on what it might be but I'm like, it's going to be crazy. So just get ready for that. And then at any point in the movie that I was just really out of it, I'm just like reminding myself, I'm like, this end credit scene better be fucking good because this is this is not that great to watch. And then when it happened, it, it blew my mind. And I was like, holy shit. That's funny because that, that's the same way I did because obviously like it's not like I was not the biggest fan of Black Widow, but I was like, man, yeah. we're going to end credit scenes. This is great. And so many people had said big things about that. And I was disappointed there. So that's just like to me the way I describe the end credit scene because I, I, I agree with James Gunn when he's like, oh, the movie shouldn't be about that. It's about the movie. I 100 percent agree. But like it's a fun thing for fandom. Right. And I feel like it's where you go on a date with, you know, maybe a double date or a triple date. And maybe it's with your girlfriend's friends that you really don't like. But she's promised you like, hey, get through this date. And and at the end of it, you're going to go home and get laid. You're like, okay, They're like this date's going to suck, but I'm just going to get here. Black Widow for me was the date happens when you get home, then she falls asleep. It's like, oh man, this isn't happening anymore. Venom was, uh, you know, Venom put out, I'll say that. And I did, even though people had said Black Widow had a big end credit scene, this one I kind of believed was stuff going on. But yeah, let's talk about the movie. Let's get out of the way first. Yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but like, you know what? Let's, let's start with them. Let's start with Carnage because all... yeah. <laughs> obviously we were introduced to him uh last movie in the end credit scene uh there's gonna be carnage stuff like that and i like i said i just don't enjoy the choice he was going for i don't feel he's actually maniacal i think i would have enjoyed his choice if they started to lean into the b movie the whole way through but i just feel like there's times where he feels very not out of character but at not fitting in the th i don't know I don't know the best way to describe it. It's just, it just, if you're going in a forward motion, he just feels like he's pushing. He's like a magnet. He's like pulling the movie back. And it, it's this combination of like, I don't like the choice, but it also feels kind of lazy at the same time. Like it doesn't feel like he's like, he, this feels like a paycheck movie and maybe it's not. And that's why I hate sometimes saying that against actors, but just, I don't feel like, this is something that for Carnage, where, you know, whether it's the animated series, video games or comic books, I feel like he leaves such an impression on you. I don't feel like this does that other than, oh, he no. looks cool, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a great observation on the character because Carnage was one of those characters. That as soon as I like saw him, I don't even know if it was in the animated series or a comic book or the video game, whatever I saw him in, it just yeah. blew my mind because I was so in love with the character of Venom and he was just so interesting, like the design. And then you just get a red version of him that's just more dangerous and scarier. Mm -hmm. um, so like I had that imprint in my mind and I think I think similarly uh like feeling for the first movie for me on like venom because i already just had so much love for the character that i just like in the back of my mind was probably forcing myself to try and, and just enjoy it a little bit but in this one it was it was kind of tough honestly because cletus cassidy is such like an iconic character um like in the spider-man world and he's just so like like i i kind of know what to expect when i see that character like he's just such a serial killer and so crazy and i think the woody harrelson thing he was like okay I, I knew who he was because like i have past knowledge of the character he's got red mm -hmm. hair um but like the scary factor was just so not turned up for me and as soon as i saw him like i was sitting with my buddy and he just turned to me he's like hey, it's woody harrelson i'm like yep that's exactly who who i see as well like i don't see cletus cassidy <laughs> here you know like i see woody harrelson <laughs> and that was kind of tough um again like i i think i just kind of like compartmentalized <laughs> and like, yeah i like, took myself out of the situation of just being like Okay, I'm seeing him on screen right now, but I know at some point I'm actually going to see Carnage, so I I'm I'm just going to allow myself to sit through this. But for the Cletus Cassidy part of the character, yeah, no, I really really didn't like it. Um, there was a a couple moments like when they were talking about his backstory, and it went to like that hand drawn animation thing. I really mm -hmm. really liked that actually. I thought like yeah, I thought his character design of like little Cletus Cassidy with like the crazy fiery hair and everything, it just it was so good, and it was. Uh, like it wasn't long and drawn out it was like quick enough to just kind of tell the tale of like how fucked up this character is 
And I really, really like that moment. But that was probably like the Cletus Cassidy moment, or sorry, like the prime of the Cletus Cassidy <laughs> for me in the movie. And it wasn't even yeah. Woody Harrelson, you know, it was just like telling the, the tale of like the character. But like any time that he tried to just be like almost like Hannibal Lecter, <laughs> you know, have like serial killer like behind the glass and like trying to be all clever, like, oh, Eddie, you need me. And oh, I just want to talk. And like they're a little back and forth. Like I just didn't buy it at all. Like I've seen that type of relationship done really, really well, whether it's Silence of the Lambs or even like the show Hannibal, right? Um, I I just it, it seems so B movie, like <laughs> like what you said. Um which is so strange because, like you said, like it, it's got B movie vibes, but yet it's Tom Hardy and Woody Harrelson on on screen. You know, like arguably yeah. one of the greatest actors like around right now. So it was just, it was a strange moment. But I think me compartmentalizing and just being like, let's just get through this, and you know, like let's just get through this and get to the action scenes. Whereas I feel like if this was the first movie in the series and they had like they're throwing around names like venom and carnage and it's like holy shit this movie's gonna be amazing if i went into that scene and like their back and forth dialogue was there i probably would have shed a tear like it would have been like i can't believe this is like my one live action (laughs) moment with these two characters but i think since i had that first movie to kind of soften the blow of my expectations it kind of helped it a little maybe not helped it it just didn't like uh bring it down as much as it could have uh, that was my feeling on it <laughs> yeah no i agree through the drawing that was like a fun nice little touch uh yeah like i said before i can't say much more about woody harrelson i think it's just not a great performance and i just honestly think from day one too like i was waiting for him to prove me wrong but i feel like for most of us and if you disagree cool you can hit us on the comments but i feel like whenever we heard woody harrelson as cleus we we're always like oh really like that doesn't tr- track and i know people would always be like well natural born killers he's played a killer before that doesn't matter like you can play a good like it's the same reason as like <laughs> like i don't know and you're talking about hannibal lecter like anthony hopkins plays a great you know hannibal lecter right but like i wouldn't say like oh because he played one great serial killer he should be cletus cassidy you know it's like yeah. no it's just like and the thing is woody harrelson's a great actor so i always thought okay maybe it's gonna happen maybe it's gonna change and it just never did the character i think he was and this is not to make a fun pun or anything i think he was torn in too many locations i think sh- i understand why shriek was in this movie but i think that really hurt i think the route to go was just do the purely eddie carnage yeah. story this time and then the next movie bring that in and stuff because I threw it to you guys in predictions and I am like, and this is why these movies feel so old and dated because I was shocked that not only did they fully kill off Cletus, they killed off carnage too. They're like, we're not bringing these characters back. Now anything can happen in comic books. Right. But not even a, like keeping them somewhat alive. Like even like a, Oh, maybe it's out there. Even see the simulate crawl away. No, it just felt like a definitive, like, Oh, I hope you enjoyed carnage because you're never getting them again. So the fact that, I didn't really like and I, I like other than your drawing, like I said, I liked nothing about Carnage. I think he looked cool. And I think when Carnage was Carnage, all that stuff was great. Cause like I said, the violence wasn't the like it wasn't like, oh my god, like like wincing, but the cool stuff that was intended, like his moves and stuff, that yeah. all looked great. And him running around and like the sounds he made. And it was strange because that's kind of the whole point of Cletus and Carnage, is they're both these very violent, you know, personalities, so they do match, but Cletus was definitely violent as a serial killer, but there's times where I felt like Carnage still felt like a very different personality where that's not really, to me at least, so I've always read Cletus, that that's not the thing. The reason why they get along so well is because they're both psychotic, right? Where at this yeah. time, like there's times where he's like breaking apart from Carnage because like he's worried about his love. There's times where Carnage is like threatening him and he's not scared, but he's kind of backing off where again, that's just not from, you know, the comic books I know and love. And then you go, okay, as always, they're not doing what I've read. So what are they doing here? And what they're doing here is just so mixed up. You got Carnage and Cletus. Okay. You got Cletus and Shriek. And then you have this whole, I hated the last line of, oh, I just want you to be my friend. And I get that, right? Because he's a crazy crazy person. We've seen this trope before. And I would be fine with it even if you go to the trope, if you would have got more screen time of them together. But really, from our movie knowledge, they had the end credit scene last one. And maybe they've talked a few more times. They had one more interview and then the time when he was going to kill himself. So only like a handful of times. And those conversations were, I think that's what was missing where I liked it when he did bring up his, uh, which we never really get again. He brought up his dad, right? Or, Or what happened again? There was an accident that, 
Oh, right. No, his mom died because of childbirth, right? Which is <laughs> kind of funny. Like, I like what the movie's trying to go for, and Eddie got so mad. But it's like, okay, your mom giving birth to you is not the equivalent of Cletus, like, killing his whole family and, like, <laughs> hundreds of people. But whatever. That was a fun, like, oh, we're actually learning some personal stuff about Eddie Brock. One, they never went back to it. And two, I wanted them to expand upon that more because then you would believe maybe Carnage. Because I thought they were going to play with the angle of like he accidentally did something to hurt one of his family members. So that's why there is a connection there. But I didn't buy any reason. They, I guess my long story short is I never understood why Cletus was obsessed with Eddie. If he would have known about the symbiote beforehand and that's why he was interested. Yeah. That would have worked, but he didn't know that till like his last like half an hour of his life. So I don't understand. Like I said, that me, like I would just want to be your friend. That was a bad line. I didn't understand at all why Cletus had any affiliation or excitement by Eddie Brock, who to me is not that interesting of character. So I don't really know. The movie didn't really give yeah. me anything. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I like I don't have the most knowledge on Cletus Cassidy or Carnage, but like just from what I I thought I understood, like he's just not oh, really a, a redeemable character. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have all the facts, but like he's just not a redeemable character in my eyes. He's just like a yes. like a psychotic killer, and like that's just who he is. And I think a part of me. Or sorry, like a part of that is what I like so much about the character is that it's just let's just take this psychotic sociopath serial killer and just give him the symbiote and see what happens. Like it just makes for mm. a super chaotic bad guy. Um, but in this movie, like they were trying to play along the lines of like, like you said, like he's trying to befriend Eddie. They're trying to like show Eddie how similar they, similar they are. And I didn't once like like by that at all like especially for the limited screen time that we saw with them like yeah even if you include the last movie it's just like one line right at the end it's just like the first time that he's meeting him um but even then it's like as if he had like knowledge of eddie like he just seems to like kind of know him i guess we just roll our eyes and accept it and then in this one like yeah they have some interviews back and forth but like it's so limited it's so hard for just like a viewer yeah. to kind of buy that type of relationship and then right at the end like when he <laughs> when he dropped that line of like i just wanted to be your friend i like i literally just i, I think i had like my hand on my face and i'm just like <laughs> okay let's just get to the end credit scene because this is so brutal like they they didn't do a good job with this character let's just get him off the screen and move along um and it it, it really sucked because i I wanted to see a good version of the character and I didn't get that. And I, I think I'm not so upset about it because I, like I said before, I kind of, my expectations were pretty not too high. So I yeah. think that's a big reason why I didn't care too much at the end of the day. But yeah, no, I, I, I didn't like, I, I really didn't like like anything with Cletus and his relationship. I don't think that should have been in the movie at all. I think they should just focus more of their time with just, having Cletus be Cletus and if they're worried about oh it's kind of boring if all he is is a psycho killer like I don't think so at all like let's just go in this movie the humor of with like Venom and Eddie is enough to just say like we're not trying to make a serious movie <laughs> so yeah. like, like don't try and put in too many layers I don't know just have Cletus in there and maybe you'd heard about the the symbiote or maybe you saw an image of it like that would have just switched the plot and in, in in like in a different way because you wouldn't have shriek in anything and like that whole backstory of like when the movie started with them in <laughs> in the i don't know it's it's like a reform school or something yeah i was i was literally just like rolling my eyes because first of all it was like woody harrelson's voice on someone that wasn't woody harrelson and i was i was just shaking my head i'm like okay i here we go it was someone clearly not woody harrelson is like my favorite <laughs> thing is like when they're like 1996 it's like we knew what he looked like in 1996 <laughs> motherfucker it's like and he didn't look like this good looking guy that you have like and, it, and it, oh. it, yeah it, Right, like I, I already had a feeling because of just what this movie is marketing. But right when we got that, I was like, "Oh no, here we go!" And just like this, like weird stuntiness of the opening of like when she gets shot, but not really, and she's hidden away, and like, yeah. it's, I just knew, okay, this is exactly what we're in for, and it delivered on that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, no, I, yeah. I hated the whole opening of this movie. Honestly, like until. I don't even know what minute point, but like for the like majority of the beginning, I just really wasn't into it. And it, it was not a good opening, in my opinion. Um, but just, yeah. So just getting back to Cletus, though, I, I really didn't like anything with him. There's some bright spots with Carnage that I'll, I'll shout out. Um, yeah. 
I don't know. Do you have anything else to say on Cletus? Probably not. Um, no, I think the only thing I didn't like, like, cause they kept the origin stuff of him killing his family, the grandma and stuff like that. What another thing, again, when I were talking about the, if, if this movie was really an hour and a half, then okay. I don't buy that. I think some stuff was cut cause they have this line where Carnage is, be- or sorry, Cletus is beating him up again. They do this thing where the bell's going off and they're both not in their symbiote. Right. And then he's beating Eddie up and he's like, you didn't tell everyone the whole story. And then yeah, he starts, that's right. <laughs> and he starts to beat him up and he starts to explain like the reason he killed all these people were because he was abused. Now, one, I think some of that is true, especially with the father. I don't know what the grandmother, I didn't remember in the comics, the grandmother being abused, but I've read Carnage, but not, I'm not a Carnage savant. So you could fact check me on say, okay, you're right. But either way, that was another sign of like, okay, we're trying to humanize him. Like, and very last minute too, like he's literally like five minutes away from getting his head bitten off. So like, why do we need to do this now? If he survived, I'd understand that. But clearly he's not going to this movie. But so he's saying this of like, oh, I was used by my father and grandma and mom, but you didn't write about any of that. Like, I, I guess we saw, <sighs> here's the thing. So he does, Eddie has that meeting, right? And the whole idea is he wants him to put out a message so Shriek will see it and then he'll give him some evidence of like where the bodies are and his life story and stuff like that, right? So what happens was though later on, like they're walking past the jail cell and they see these walls and Venom figures out that there's a location where these bodies are buried. And when Cletus gets the newspaper, he's freaking out. He's mad. He's like punching the walls and stuff, which is just a comedic scene. But nowhere from the interview to the end point of that movie when he says you didn't tell the whole story, do they ever have Carnage or Cletus be like accuse Eddie of like, why didn't you tell my yeah. story? Like if they were going to make him sympathetic, I don't like that, but then keep going with it. So the fact that that's where I feel like there was something in the movie earlier that was cut where he was mad about that as well. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was in that last scene before he was about to be killed, Cletus, but I don't recall any point in the movie of them ma- like highlighting that Eddie because that's kind of a not shitty thing, but it, it is what Cleese says like you're not telling the whole story, and I feel like that doesn't really fit with like the new Eddie we have. Like it feels like the old Eddie would kind of take some side like some shortcuts and to get a better story, but it feels like this story Eddie's like all about the truth and getting out there. So it felt weird that oh like he's still kind of being a scumbag guy now. Cletus is a serial killer. I'm not saying you you know like he deserves something good, but it is just like he's kind of like I said, Eddie to me turned into like, oh, I'm going to tell the whole story. So it felt odd from a character standpoint why he wouldn't do that. And it felt yeah. odd for me as the viewer because and maybe I did. And please tell me YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, if we did miss something. But I did not recall. Did you recall anything of them like he, like making a big deal that he left out Cleese's whole story of why these end. things? Yeah, no, like like not at all. Like his they they have very limited just like interview time like honestly yeah. and every time that they talk about it it's just like okay i'll tell you my life story if this happens and then you get to the end of the movie and it's just you didn't tell the whole story <laughs> and yeah that's the thing that's where there i feel like there must be a scene cut where he did tell the story oh, right because yeah. he said he would tell him that and never did and it just felt yeah it it was just odd and it's kind of stuff like that happens throughout the movie where either scenes are not gelling or it's just okay you're throwing one thing out and this is the story you go okay i i i, I guess so. it just felt odd and that's kind of the things about the movie i think that was my last clearest point i'm just trying to think there's anything else on him I, but no and the, my last point too i guess is i think we saw this in the trailer but again i just knew one of his first lines when he's talking to eddie he's like eddie people love serial killers and that's like oh man this is the writing we're getting right now but <laughs> i digress uh anything to say on shriek obviously they said what we talked about well, you guys talked about those predictions and i chimed in a little bit that they have been kind of lovers and stuff in the past before they definitely went with that as we talked about we did not like the opening um as i said in the non spoilers they to me did nothing with this character the only reason i think she was in this is because we needed some way for carnage to be defeated and she's a character that has sound great we figured it out you know like it's like the writers couldn't figure out anything else i didn't love the chemistry between her and woody not that there really was much time to do that she was like i said you could have got anyone for this role as a character she was like lower than fine like i literally have nothing to say i liked the whole ravencroft like prison setup of like the dudes with their headphones and like then the earbuds so like there was little moments around that i like but on the whole very lackluster character and story yeah no i 
I didn't really know much about the character going into the movie, and then like <laughs> you still through, don't watching the trailer. Yeah, watching the trailer, and then especially because we just did like Skyfall, uh, and she was in that. It's like, oh, I'm ex- I'm, I'm I'm getting excited to see this character <laughs> in Venom. Holy shit, was I disappointed? Like you said, like they could have literally had me as the character, and it would have yeah. been like the same effect because she just. She didn't have anything to work with, really. Like, her lines were so just generic. And I, like you said, I didn't really buy the chemistry between the two. She seemed just tack on there to have a weakness for Carnage. Like, that was really all it was. Yeah. And I, I just, I didn't like her on screen when she was in the cell. Like, all of those scenes were just really bad in my eyes. Um, yeah, no, I <laughs> like, I have very little to say on her. I when I was in my notes, my pros and cons list, all I wrote was Shriek in the con <laughs> because it was just her whole character. I just didn't really like at all. Well, and and I, I like this is to me like I don't know. Some might say, oh, they're subverting your expectations. I guess to me, I thought it was just poor writing or storytelling because so they start to do this thing right where she shrieks for the first time and it hurts carnage right so it's like okay this is clever because it's like yeah you know that's her power she can't use it and carnage just threatens it's like if she ever does that again i'm gonna rip her head off so okay fair enough and it makes sense that when she goes to get venom or eddie they send her away so they can't get hurt so that this was consistent plot line and then they get married <laughs> and oh, at, at some point carnage like pushes her aside and Cletus is like, that's my wife. Don't touch my wife. And he like <laughs> sucks Cletus back in and he, like, he hits like Shriek a few times and pretty much like abuse her and takes her out of the equation, right? So there's this moment at the end, which is just <laughs> so stupid. Venom's on the ground in the church. That's why they're at a church in the previews, if you're wondering, if you didn't see the movie, is that's where Cletus and Shriek decide they're going to get married, okay? Because he gave her like what? It was like a, some sort of like, ring fashion out of what socks or something like fabric that he gave her at the beginning know, of the movie yeah. yeah something yeah so either way so he gives this ring the whole point is they want to get married okay so they're gonna get married they're gonna do this wedding so venom is like underneath rubble and i can't remember the exact reason what was the exact reason how he oh right because he notices cletus and carnage aren't symbiotic and like look like that's us we're we are we are venom and it's just like I, and tom hardy's like inner venom dialogue stuff the reverse is fine but when he was eddie brock and venom did not sound good it just sounded like he yeah. recorded his lines yesterday but either way so they're setting up that carnage is getting tired of shriek and he's literally at one point going to kill her so venom gets up there he has like a staff they're fighting and like venom is getting fucked up he's getting shot with knives he's getting stabbed there's one point where carnage just like stat skewers him and lifts him up I'm like jesus like they're doing a number on brock right now so they're looking at this as he's skewered and of course they're like oh they have to we gotta find fire or sound and he looks back at shriek and it's this epic moment and i thought okay shriek's gonna have a moment here because the whole movie so far carnage has been getting worse and worse abusing her shoving her side and pretty much she even at one point says she's just like which i'm sure some people that make the brat bra, like the brazzer themes are gonna love it she's just like cletus you're getting too big or whatever she says and that's too <laughs> big because like he like, oh yeah. yeah yeah he's he's growing but again she's scared and she gets like wrapped around carnage thrown aside again so again there's a common theme she keeps getting abused by carnage so what i thought was gonna happen is he's gonna look back and she's gonna team up with venom just to save cletus right give her a moment to get back at carnage <laughs> no what happens venom fucking punts her down the church just so she'll scream and fall and then while she scream and falls she hits the ground and the fucking ring bell takes her out so i thought they're gonna give her this hero moment no venom oh, yeah. just like oh yeah Boom, <laughs> you go, bitch, kicks her down, and that's the bigger screen. Like, okay, so she that that was no setup there. And I, I do want to say before I forget it, because I didn't write my notes. I don't know if this was on purpose, but I feel like the scene with Anne and him lowering Anne, were they trying to invoke the Gwen Stacy death scene? Because man, that looked like it. It looked <laughs> so much like it. Yeah, it maybe. Was, if you ever want you to watch them back to back, like, cause she's also blonde, but she's blonde. She's getting lowered down. And like slowly, I was like, what is about to happen here? She's about to like drop and get her neck broke, but uh didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. Um, Yeah. Just that line when, when like Cletus as carnage was just like growing, you know, glowing up. And then Shree's just like, you got to go like, you're, it's getting too big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like for one, the line was just so cheesy, but also it just seemed so, like out of 
I was gonna say out of character, even though I didn't really get to understand what the character shriek was. It's just like, why would she care of like Carnage getting bigger in that moment? Because like when she first saw Cletus's Carnage, she was like excited, and, like, oh, what's she this turned new on. thing? She, yeah, she had the, maybe the worst line I've heard of the year because it's delivered by Knowing Harris. That's hot, and like she's like <laughs> she's in the cell, and I'm like, oh, no. Yeah don't do this to my girl and stuff like that. And then they like break the glass. And I did like the scene where they're like making out. And while they're making out, like carnage is like killing people. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of fun. But like, it, it, man, when that scene, they had like the caregiver and she's like, your boyfriend's never going to find you. And he just like appears in front of her. He's like, here we are. And he's just doing his stuff. And, Oh man, it was, uh, I can't remember. I thought there was someone else about that scene, but I think you're right though. As far as she said, the hotline at the point where they're escaping and he had like a web of carnage all over. She was yeah. like she fine was, with it. She was super you know? excited. And then later on, like yeah. they're, they're like fighting for their lives, you know, against venom and like their enemies in this moment. And she's just like, just like settle down, you know, like this is getting a little too crazy. It's just, it, it just didn't vibe with me, but it, like I said, at the end of the day, I didn't really get to understand what the character of Shriek was like. So it just happened. And then, yeah, when she was up at the like the bell, I totally thought she was going to like just scream and like kind of incapacitate both of them. But then Eddie just like bitch slaps her. Yeah. <laughs> she goes flying down. And then like it was as Complete if like her hitting, it was like her hitting the bell kind of like caused like a, a, like a noise effect. And then she just like screamed as she was falling, which took the bell out, which ended up just like crushing her maybe she's just like perfectly fine you know like in the bell it's like a little hollow cave she's she's still in there yeah uh but i i don't even want that to be the case because she just was so forgettable and then what did you think about the moment where carnage hate the priest and he said power up uh, and then when he <laughs> bit the priest's head off and that's how he got bigger so he pretty much i guess eating people for carnage is like the mario like mushroom <laughs> it's a mushroom, mushroom yeah 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 um <laughs> poor yeah, guy too I, is i don't really have anything to say on it I, it happened i'm like oh okay he's just he's getting bigger the more people yeah. he eats i guess i um, did like that venom said like her you can eat everybody except the guy in the row but then he got in and he ended up getting eaten so that that sucks for him you know yeah he got he got eaten <laughs> and like what a way like his poor family that has to bury this man like what happened oh well he was kidnapped you know that serial killer kill, cleas cassie well he was kidnapped by him who had an alien on him and then he was forced to do a wedding and then he got his head bitten off that has to be one of the worst ways to go out you know like that's awful oh um, yeah you have to bury just a headless body <laughs> that's, that's yeah brutal. Uh, and then I guess I forgot to say, too, because we're probably moving on from Cletus is also, man, the double like whammy of the, oh, I just want to be your friend. And then Eddie's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then when he turns back to Venom and Venom goes, fuck this guy. And then he bites his head off. Ooh, just it just Big feels oof. like it's trying to be edgy. That's what it, it feels like if we were 10 to 12 and we wrote a Venom Carnage movie, you know, <laughs> yeah. but the, these are grown ass <laughs> like Academy Award nominated some of them adults and yeah and like you were saying you know in covid we, we don't have a full theater you said your your theater was pretty quiet for the most part yeah. there was there was like for me it wasn't a full theater obviously but like there was a group of like youngins maybe like mm -hmm. 13 or so um and they They're were they were time. they were having some fun with like the action and like that line probably kind of got them and then there was an older couple in front of me i say older they're probably like late 40s early 50s or something 25 and, <laughs> um i like that humor didn't work for them at all but like there was just <laughs> the dialogue between like eddie and venom they like got them so like it's interesting just like the different uh like age groups and like the humor that might hit them because i remember even in our theater like that was a gong show watching it but like there were still some older couples that just love like the, the venom eddie back like and the forth. first one I th yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The first one, it was, the first one is Gangbusters. When that movie ended, remember the people applauded. You know, that was the yeah. Thing, that's right. So. We had people yeah, like Venom like... shirts and stuff. But again, that's just like Venom's pure live action. Yeah. This is crazy. Um, yeah. No, uh, I, my theater got like everyone, so I'll be like, ha, ha, ha. but like it wasn't <laughs> like there wasn't anyone that belly laughed. It was like 
it was like kind of awkwardly silent because I was like, well, you know, what? I'm not enjoying this, but maybe the people are going to. And it was just this general, like oh, general, no. nah, we're not really into this right now. And like I didn't think they just like this. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is this? This isn't cinema. But no, like, like, and I'm not saying I'm not trying to be like, oh, the entire theater hated it. No, I don't think that. I'm sure they enjoyed their experience just fine. But it just like compared to the first Venom where it was like a laugh riot the first yeah. time. And even then, sure, yeah, the theater is more full. But even if you were to go have those people half those people from that first showing we went to it's still been tons of people laughing this didn't have that at all for my theater at least yeah. so yeah and then uh where, what were you gonna do there i, I just I was had gonna that. do an ad break and then okay. move forward i figured you're gonna month. do an ad break yeah. I would... <laughs> you can do that so we'll be right back and then we'll probably kirkland has a topic and then we should probably talk about eddie brock too because you know he's the main character of this movie so we'll be right back we got 30 seconds i'm gonna take my water i was going to uh just say a couple last things on carnage just leave on a positive note okay leave on a positive. <laughs> that's good i didn't know twitch when you do that it, it's a weird number it says you can't run another ad for 11 minutes why 11 minutes why not 10 minutes you know yeah i don't know it's I'll a strange it. choice yeah but alas here we are so all right we are about to be back and we're back. So, Kirkland, you have a few more points on uh, Cletus or slash Carnage. You want not to Cletus? Oh, I'm <laughs> done with Cletus. <laughs> I have nothing positive to say on Cletus. I unfortunately started with like the comic strip of his backstory. I should have ended with yeah. that because that was the positive Cletus moment. Um, yeah, just with Carnage, I I think like you mentioned, like his action scenes was was fun, and I I agree because that was, I mean, my my biggest bright spot on these venom movies is the symbiotes in action yeah. i just think they look really good um still need that spider on him but I've, i swallowed that pill after the, the first one um it's coming. It, i guess it <laughs> we'll is coming. Talk about it. <laughs> um but with carnage i like you mentioned his weapons and everything i love seeing just the different arsenal that he had yeah. um just kicking ass that prison scene was was really really good in my opinion yeah. and like when he was first like shown um that was like probably the most horror <laughs> like moment when it just like is like the black cell and then he comes out and just like screams mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of like what i remember from carnage is like just like his his like ear shattering screech he's not yeah. shriek or anything but like it's just so it's just so scary and, and he has those high-pitched laughs usually in games and animation yeah. usually, obviously in comic books you don't hear that but i feel like usually when they do the laughs or carnage it's like that weird type of haha -ha, like the type of font and everything yeah He's it's, supposed to be unsettling. And I think the prison scene had that a little bit. But then after, I, I don't think they like completely lost it, but it never got back to that prison scene where, like you said, it did feel scary for a little bit there. And he felt yeah. like the alien from like, like alien, like oh, totally. alien stuff like that. But then after, once he started talking to Woody Harrelson, it was like, okay, a little less, a little <laughs> yeah, less. No, exactly. Impactful. That was definitely like the peak of the carnage um, was just yeah. like his reveal, in my opinion, and just like murdering people. Um, and like, like I saw it in like the extreme theater, like on the West side. So it had like super mm. crazy audio. And like when he screeched, I like kind of was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. So that was like, it, again, it was just fitting for the character. So I was all in on, on that stuff. Um, and then, <laughs> fuck, I should have started with the, the negative side. I really didn't like his carnage voice, like when he was talking no. to Cletus. In and you, I might be wrong here, but like in my memory, I remember him just having a lot more of like a higher pitched voice and just like really like sc like screechy. Yeah, um, but at the same time, that's not the comics, right? So in the comics, he's never had like right. I don't think they've no, ever described right. it as a higher pitch. But most people have gone with the higher pitch voice, so it is kind of like when he's like, "Oh, I need to get venom in," and yeah. I'm gonna mess him up. It's like oh, okay, like you just kind of sound like the like kind of just like what tom hardy does where i was like okay you're gonna put out a, like a growly voice and that's it like it's not unsettling when he talks it's no. just a bad dude and i i think again this might just be pulling from like my own head canon here but like carnage is also just like a small like slimmer than than, yes. than venom so when venom has that like meaty that meaty voice i buy it whereas when carnage is like talking he just sounds like another venom voice you know and i i i wish it was just more more uh more different more you see how big he got though you're that's true he did power up so you're getting too big maybe his voice gets like deeper the more the more people he eats <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's uh, my last carnage stuff though so eddie brock so his kind of whole story here which you know what i, I can appreciate what they're going for because i think the good thing is if you like the first one you like this one this is why you're here is to see the eddie venom dynamic because you like this dynamic right it's yeah. like a jim carrey the mass sort of situation it's like uh 
I don't know how, what like uh, like a imaginary friend in a way like obviously Venom's not imaginary but it's like that where Eddie's usually talking to himself and he's running around the room and all these hijinks are going on and the whole crux is we've talked about this with trailers but like a very weird thing where at the end of the first movie one of my f- least favorite things sequels do they say yeah we're gonna start eating bad guys and that's how it's gonna feed you and then directly when this movie picks up no we're not doing that and the whole movie gets us to the exact point again where it's like okay well we're gonna be lethal protectors and i don't know for sure if they're gonna be eating people but to me that was kind of insinuated so i hate sequels that you know make the first issue that was resolved an issue again and then resolve it so you're kind of like oh well the third one it's like even though i loved it like the punisher series on netflix did that where it would end with like kind of almost like what we talked about with james bond where it's like okay this time he's gonna be bond and then no the same thing with punisher be like oh he's gonna be punisher now and then something happens where it's like oh he's taking a break it's like oh okay like when's he gonna actually be the punisher and that's what this feels like where it's like we just needed another movie so and we needed a conflict between eddie and venom but if you like eddie and venom i think there's lots of good stuff in here for you i don't think that this stuff doesn't like annoy me or offend me or anything like that. It just none of it really played for me and made me laugh that much. And that's where I will say some of the Eddie and Venom stuff made me laugh in the first one. Now, I'm not a fan of this take. I don't like Venom. Yes, people always do this where they look. Venom is a goofy character. and They show a panel. Yeah, he has been goofy before, but at least the version that I feel is more media and the version that I like as I guess it's tough because that's usually when he is on the other side. Right. So they're trying to make him a hero. So I guess it's just for me. I've talked about this before. I wouldn't mind if he was wanting to eat people, but they just play it off as for jokes and stuff like that. And it's not the biggest fan for me, but I think there's some, you know, all right moments. There's the kitchen or the cooking thing we saw in the kitchen from the trailers. I did like the kind of breakup fight when he's like, they're going to throw stuff out the TV and everything, but I liked it like enough. I wasn't laughing. I wasn't like, Oh, this is really good. I just think it fit with what they're going for. And I don't think it was bad. I was just kind of like, okay, this is all right. And then you actually have, which I did like was the symbiote leave Eddie for a little bit. And he's like mm-hmm. trying to find other hosts. And then it literally becomes like a rom-com where they decide <laughs> that they're both right for each other and stuff. So if you like that, I think they, they nailed that out of the park. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think somewhere around here is like when the beginning ended for me and I was just like actually getting into the movie. Cause it was yeah. more of just like the two of them. Um, and I, I, I really liked all that stuff. Like the stuff in the apartment was fun. The breakup stuff was fun and like him just like switching hosts and like just like draining them and then like just having to find more people i i really like that uh he, when he went to like that party for weirdos i was kind of like laughing at that part not like belly laugh or anything but there's just certain moments like when he walked up to like the singer and just like took the mic it's like yeah this is right and i was just like this is so fucking random but it's working that's for me. what i was talking about on <laughs> after nine that's what i saw i saw that was in one of the tv spots of oh, him okay. saying like thank you and he like mic drops it and i was like man and yeah in the movie it didn't play as bad but it's still just like Again, it's just not what I look for and what I'm wanting my no. content to yeah. be, right? It, it was just, it was so, it took, like, it threw me off. And I think I was just like, what is happening? And kind of chuckling of, like, yeah. just seeing Venom with, like, the glow sticks <laughs> and everything. Um, I'm always confused, though, when stuff like that happens. I'm like, hey, well, he's obviously just in a super loud environment. Like, clearly, <laughs> like, only certain loud noise really affects him, but nonetheless um when he was up there and like just i think the first line was just like yeah eddie was wrong or something like screw eddie and they're all just like cheering him on i'm just like what is going on here like this is just again it made me laugh it hit my it tickled my humor (laughs) a little bit um but yeah no i i liked him switching hosts i liked the 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 hotel stuff but again that like that was the parts that i i think i liked uh like from the first movie other than the action like that was probably like my second thing i liked it was see i i can't even say that though because like some of their dialogue was also just super cringy and like random and i it just didn't work for me but i think Mm. uh like what you had mentioned like the eddie with venom in his ear like a lot of that just didn't really work especially because it was so forced down your throat like they just kept trying to they do did the jokes lot. like yeah. every <laughs> yeah and, like, may- I- and, and maybe it feels like a lot because like the first movie the first what 20 30 minutes he's just eddie and then he gets a symbiote and it's the introduction where yeah. the back half had a lot of this like eddie brock dynamic right so now that we start the movie with him with the symbiote maybe it is like a to a ratio would have been the same but because this is but at the same point, you brought up that the runtime is shorter, so it's probably equivalent. It just felt like 
they are trying a lot harder this time. They're like, oh, everyone really liked this. Let's do this again. It's like, if you like cheese, like, okay, we're just going to put fucking cheese, like so much cheese on these nachos. All, But the problem is all you're going to taste is cheese. You don't taste the veggies. You don't There's taste two the salsa. nachos in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what the, like I said, that scene with Venom, Eddie, and Carnage, Every that's why I was talking about the non spoilers. Like anybody that wants to give MCU shit for cracking a joke, this movie was so going hard on like every like. There's not to me. There's very few scenes you could say like was to being taken seriously where there was not a joke happening. Which I'm fine. It's obviously I'm an MCU fan, but just like sometimes people talk about this like, oh yeah, so many Marvel something different. It's like, yeah, I guess, yeah. but it's <laughs> I, I think it's just them doing MCU type of humor and stuff, just not as good. Because I just found also just some of the Venom jokes just didn't land as well as the first one did. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. I I, I feel like um, yeah, no, I don't even remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so like with with Venom leaving Eddie and like going yeah. off, and then like you said, they're just kind of separated there. And just having like Eddie as Eddie again, I think that was kind of refreshing. Like him, like cleaning up his apartment. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, it's pretty similar to the first movie of just having Eddie as himself. Because uh, we didn't get that from the start of this film. He was just attached to Venom, and then he, uh, like, he's especially when he like goes down to his computer and he's trying to like almost solve the case and like what would Venom do? And then he's kind of like speaking like Venom. He's like, "Eat their heads," blah blah blah. Like kind of the the cheesy line. But I think I think that little hint of like of like seeing eddie like post venom like uh, mm. like uh possession i guess you'd call it it, it was fun though because it, it it shows you a glimpse of like how infused he actually got and like every day that he lives he's attached to venom like venom is just constantly oh, yeah. in his ear That'd and i awful. think w- i think when he's just like making jokes constantly yeah it's annoying for me personally because a lot of the comedy just doesn't hit but also i think maybe they're trying to show of just like how much like venom is in eddie's ear yeah. and maybe you don't have to have all humor lines from venom like but i i i don't know maybe if i'm trying to defend them i would say like they're just trying to show how like almost schizophrenic he's becoming of like having someone in his yeah. head like that um but I, 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 like, I just don't they're... think it was done well enough <laughs> well yeah and maybe that's the point they are trying to be like well we want to annoy the viewers so it's like you're like eddie and it's like yeah, I, I could understand that, but I was never, like, too annoyed. It's just, like, I'm just watching Venom just say a bunch of stuff that I'm not <laughs> laughing about. So I'm annoyed in the sense of, like, okay, we're... we're, we're do- and I guess, again, you could say, well, that's also the point, but it's just, oh, then what the fucking movie am I watching here, you know? Like, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> like, why are you trying to annoy me? I get there's a I, certain point, but... You know. I had that feeling a couple times in this movie. <laughs> what the fuck oh, am I watching? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, I was going to say, and then as far as predictions, uh, Anne and him did not end up together. So I actually was going to go the other way. I thought they weren't going to do that because I thought the trailers did kind of set up that her and Dan were going to be together for a bit. And it, like they didn't really push into her like loving Eddie more than him and stuff like that. So maybe they are like a fishy on the friend zone thing. She's another actress that I'm happy that she can get a paycheck from this, but I don't know why she's in this that we didn't get that team up like i predicted she was there at the church scene i thought for sure she was gonna get she venom like she used it at one point to throw at eddie but i thought for sure she was gonna get she venom in this to help fight shriek and carnage but that did not happen um i really really did not like that scene when venom takes over mr Ch- uh, mrs chen and she's like trying to God, like i hated that I yeah hated that so like, much. and she was like hitting on venom or something i'm like this is so fucking strange like, well Anne, i don't think she she's hitting about. on venom I, well like she, she hit is, it on his ego like, or something you know yeah I, it just wasn't working for me she, well i think she's just trying to manipulate him because she knows that venom like is attracted to her too or likes her so when she's like that's where it just felt super day when she's doing like, oh, I just love seeing you big and out there and doing your yeah, stuff. The lines like, was so <laughs> terrible. Like, and I know like, like, it, I saw someone praise that because they're like, oh, she knows exactly what movie she's in. It's like, oh, like I, I again, I don't get that sense from this movie enough that they it doesn't feel smart enough that they are trying to make it lean in to be really cheesy. Stuff. So when she was doing the flirting with Venom or the kind of coercing of him to get out, uh, uh-uh, not didn't like that. Nope. <laughs> No, and like since we're talking about Anne here, there's a sp- specific scene after she saves Eddie, like from the prison after she took Venom on. Um, and then I guess like that's where we got our little glimpse of she Venom. Um, I I liked her design in the first one, so it was kind of fun to see her on screen again. I think it was a missed yeah. opportunity of him not fighting, or sorry, her not fighting 
but nonetheless yeah when they like, were like, why the fuck are they paying for the budget just to do these like 20 <laughs> second scenes that we're doing like fuck like get her to know. do something like it's literally just the first movie again where she just like i guess she did like break eddie out of jail to like do that wall right but it's just i don't know like a little more, like to me that was the prime like i would have been able to give them so much credit like that you set them up to do it's like the shriek thing it's like you set her up to have a turn and you just didn't do it you set her up to have a hero moment like imagine at that moment when if eddie was really hurt the venom symbiote jumped to her and she got to kick ass for like two minutes that would have been super hype i thought that was gonna happen yeah, yeah it was um... set up for it. it was right there <laughs> and they dropped they couldn't even do that but uh just getting back to because they, they come to like an alleyway where dan is in the car and then Ven it's like they're having like their makeup scene like venom and eddie but like through yeah. Anne. and i i honestly thought this was a missed opportunity because when eddie is talking to Anne, and then Anne kind of has to be the middle person there i think what they should have done is actually had like eddie eddie like delivering these lines to venom like i am sorry for this but i think it should have been like him actually talking to Anne and like 100%. making it more heartfelt because he's like telling her how he actually feels in that moment and then it's like a nice touching moment but no they just didn't do that like he was literally just apologizing to venom there he's like mm -hmm. barely even seeing Anne in that moment and i i i was kind of shocked they didn't go for that because I like what, what's the point of having her around as opposed to just being oh this is an ex-lover that he's never going to get back like maybe at the end of the last movie we thought oh there's some hope maybe something will happen to Dan or something and she'll come yeah. back to him but well in and that especially moment, when Dan was in the church too I'm like okay Dan's gonna eat it here I thought he was gonna that, die <laughs> yeah I'm like that's how we get them that she doesn't have to divorce or break out with Dan just well she died he died and stuff I know someone might be like well he you know Eddie would have been the cause of then these movies don't care they don't really have that much no. stakes and in my opinion as far as the characters go so yeah I to me I took this as and we're gonna talk about end credits that Venom and Eddie Brock are going off on a much different direction and they're not gonna have time for Anne which is fine but that's I also still I still agree with you though that okay, you know why she's in this movie? She's damsel in distress. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's a hundred percent, and that's what's disappointing about it. And it's because like I guess they didn't use her as a damsel in distress in the first movie, so I guess it's a little bit new. But it does feel like just tying off loose ends. And there's you you just had you didn't have ideas for Anne. It's just we have Michelle Williams under contract. What can we get <laughs> Anne to do here? You know, and this is what she did. And Bravo team, Bravo. So. <laughs> yeah um what is there any i'm trying to think oh let's talk about the cop because you guys talked about my what is his name i know he becomes Tom pat mulligan I pat think. mulligan so i love that like they set up that he was the cop that had to take in shriek and then when shriek like he thinks he kills shriek he shot him and then right away like i think the first one of the first words of the words of the movie is him like someone saying mulligan so it's like really trying to get in your head like oh like look that's the same person like just so you didn't know and they really try to beat that over the head and then later on in the movie they try to like make it almost like a mini twist like that's the same cop that took her in it's like no like you guys laid this out several times like it's not a twist when he's just like that's impossible she's dead I would know when he tells the whole story again or he has a flashback. I thought I really love that actor. I love him from Boardwalk Empire. You guys have, I know, not seen that. And anything you've seen this guy in, he's not been able to show off his skill, but he's a really talented actor. I just didn't know what they wanted to do with this cop because like it it was strange because so they have this whole thing where he's gonna set up the meet key between Eddie and Cletus. Like, okay, cool. That's what's going to happen. And he says, I'm going to get you in any information. Give it to me. OK, cool. Eddie gets information. He doesn't give it to him. He gives it to the FBI, which I thought was strange because like so far, it seemed like this guy was like a nice enough cop. So I thought, oh, are they going to do a storyline where he actually is a dick? And they that's why Eddie screwed him over. And we'll learn that later. But not really throughout the movie. He's like not nice, but like he's like a normal guy i'd say like he's not like obtusely like a dick or something so in that moment retroactively i was like yeah why didn't eddie tell him about the bodies like he just said like i'll get you the interview just any information give it to me so like it felt like a real again there's multiple things in the movie that like they say eddie's changed but it's like this the whole apparently just like not telling cleus a story it's just like it was just a dicky thing not to tell him and the cop to me was not a an asshole to do that and he the cop is just kind of around he's opposing force he's trying to he's starting to figure out that venom and eddie are one i did not understand what the fuck was going with him on at the end of this 
movie because he's at the church scene. He's kidnapped. The whole thing is they bring prizes, shriek and carnage to kill at this wedding. They even say like, it's going to be a red wedding. They made a game of Thrones joke. I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, bold. But like, so at the end, like shrieks trying to kill him and stuff like that. He is like on the floor. He's like stabbed with a, bar, like a water or a, like a pole. And he's just like monsters. And <laughs> this is lame already, but he's just saying monsters to himself. And then his eyes start to glow. I don't know what the fuck that is. Like, I know he becomes talks, but to me, that was not a sign of him becoming talks. And so, no, and, and, and all in all, this character was a mess, much like the most rest of the movie. They didn't know what they wanted to do with him. I think I a hundred percent agree. I, uh, I was like, I, I knew he was toxin. So I kind of got excited him being in there, especially near the end. Like they had all of the ingredients to make toxin, <laughs> yeah. you know, they have venom, they have carnage. <laughs> and then, because, I mean, clarify here, maybe you'll be able to, like, toxin is made from carnage, right? Yes. Yeah, it's so, and then and, and then you just have Venom consume carnage, like, he's completely gone now, how are we supposed to get to toxin? Because clearly, like, Detective Mulligan <laughs> is going through something, but we he's don't something. see him, we don't get to see him, like, surrounded by a symbiote or something, so it was just strange, like, his eyes glowing, it was nothing that I've seen before, could, like, like recognize... Are, are they are they trying to say like shriek pass some powers on him or something? If so, like I need a lot more explanation. Like if it, it, it made no sense, like I don't know what the hell it means. And maybe someone does, but I just feel like as far as the viewer, they did not do a good job portraying that to us. I agree. I a hundred percent agree. I, I really don't have much to say on the character. Cause I was just waiting for him to like really have his moment. And I just felt like they didn't really give that to him. Anything else on this movie that stands out? Because I don't think I have. There might be something that comes when we talk about end credits or final Shit ratings, but I, I don't think there's anything like I liked the. I did like the chickens joke. I don't care. I like that they adopted the chickens and he won't yeah. eat them because he, he's like, "Well, oh, I got you these chickens." Yeah, he's that like, works oh, for me. Surely <laughs> and whatever. Like, no, like I can't eat them. They're family now and stuff. So I liked that. You know, there. I'm trying to think. If there's anything else? They had that one scene where they stopped the mugger. That was fine. You know. Yeah, I. I absolutely hated um, there was a scene when Cletus is like just strolling down the street. You know, he's looking fly or whatever passes for fly oh. these days. And then he just like finds this like perfectly nice red convertible. OK, whatever. You know, some people just park their My convertibles color. on the side. Yeah, jumps in there, drives away. And then, like, when he picks up Shriek, she's like, my dream car, a 66, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. He's like, I remembered. It's like, what the fuck is this? You're literally walking down the street. And he just, like, <laughs> saw the car. You, I hated you, that line. That was so bad. You know what I hated is when Cletus <laughs> found a laptop and he's like, do you have internet? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck do you go to like a 7-Eleven equivalent for like, I need access to a computer. Where do I go? Mini Mart. Or that was like the name of it. But it was basically just a gas station. Like, what are the odds that they just have? I don't know. Maybe they just, maybe it's a normal thing. To and like, have I get supplies. it because they're from a different planet. I guess maybe they got different tech going up. But you're telling me like, Carnage is a hacker. Like the symbiote, he just like sticks his fingers in, and then he's like accessing like pretty much the FBI database. And it's just like, yeah, okay, my favorite though whatever. is that he's he's accessing the database, and it's like red colored because it's him doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's such like a nineties thing of like, oh my god, what are oh, we yeah. doing here? But yeah, the fact that he like hacked into a computer, <laughs> I literally said to myself like, what the fuck? Like, like what's going on here? What are we doing in this movie? Like, what? Like, it's just so like what i hate this movie is just things happen because they just need them to happen you know it's 100%. just like well how yes. do we have well how do we get cletus to find out she's alive um he's gonna get to a laptop and he's gonna put the symbiote in it and the symbiote's gonna hack it and give him the exact location okay and also like these fuckers who's supposed to be keeping her secret her name is everywhere it's on the files her name's <laughs> on the fucking wall by her cell like have her as project something but yeah no it just <laughs> that laptop scene killed me Oh yeah, no. I like when he's driving. I'm like, hey, what's he gonna do in there? Just jumps in, kicks the dude in the face, stomps yeah. him, and then like, I'm like waiting for like a big moment on why he's there, and then he just needs the guy's laptop. Like, what? Okay, whatever. Like you said, we just need a scene to happen to bring him to the next place, and that happens yep. so many times in this movie. Oh yeah, it's just, it's just like it feels like a play where it's just like we got to get to the next like part, <laughs> like like it happens so quickly. We're like, okay, this end scene in, and then the crew's gonna come. They're gonna change the set, and then boom, another scene happens. And yeah, I'm trying to think, do we miss anything? Talk about Ann. Talk about Dan. We talked about Miss Chun a little bit. We talked about Cleus. Like I don't think I have anything more to say on the movie part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't think so. 
I, I really don't think so. Well, then let's talk about this. So we the movie ends as far as I guess we didn't say like the my favorite, not that they were going for this at all, but I think Anna at one point is like they're gonna hunt you. And I just had flashbacks to the dark night and the ending of that is like, man, like fuck. Like I know they're not trying to invoke that, but just like where we were like that decade, like man, look at these comic movies, and then here we are in Venom Town. It's like so Eddie's gonna go on the run because clearly he broke out of prison, like he, there's a wall there. He's even though the detective's dead or he's saying monsters over and over, he was clearly putting some things together. Eddie decides, okay, they're going to go on the run and they're going to go to Mexico, right? So they go there. There's a nice scene of them on the beach ending and they both kind of admit that they love each other. Venom's toes are in the sand. All this like kind of fucking cheesy stuff that's going on. Like just, <laughs> just, just weird ass Venom stuff, right? So fair enough. You like that? <laughs> awesome. So then well, we get this. Before you keep going, it's yeah. so unfortunate that like when we think of Venom now, it's like all this classic Venom cheesy stuff. Like that is not what I affiliated that character oh, with. Yeah. But thanks to these movies, now that's actually something you can say. It's, it's so unfortunate. Look what they did to my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Like a hundred, yeah, they massacred my boy, the Godfather. Like, like, and that's the, if it was the one movie, I could have put up with it, right? Because we got X Men Origins. Look at what they did to Deadpool. But then we got Deadpool the movie, and all is right. You know, like everything right. is fine. We have the Deadpool we know and love. That's We're right. hopefully getting the third one. So it all worked out. But now we have two. We have two like this, and it seems like we're going to get a third, or he's going to be going into a movie as more of this Venom. So like you said, yeah, he's just a jokester now. He's a funny, cheesy, laughable character, Venom, lethal protector. So anyway, so he's in this hotel, the Ancrets, and they're watching a soap opera. I feel like my theory was very concerned, like com- like confused for a little bit, because they were on that soap <laughs> opera for a very long time. I and loved it. I'm like, I'm like, I want to kind of just see this now. I want to know what's going on with Maximiliano and how his emotions are being. There was, there was one guy in my theater, he was like, He's like looking around, kind of like, are they playing the right thing? It's just like, give it a second, man. Like, but he felt like legitimately concerned, like they had <laughs> fucked up the end credit. So, very interesting stuff. So, there was people were talking about who told us a little bit of nonsense. There's people saying big end credit scene, blah, blah, blah. And I had said, yeah, okay. People had said the Black Widow. I felt those disappointed, but I did believe them on this just because. In the press, there's been so much fucking talk of, oh, Venom will eventually meet Spider-Man, like between Hardy, Circus, like I'll be like, oh, eventually that's the end game. It's going to happen. So to me, it was like, okay, this shit's work. And the second people are seeing this, be like, we got a big end credit scene. It was either something with Spider-Man or something assuming that I didn't think it would have been big if it was just like Morbius or another character. Like I thought it was something with the MCU or MCU adjacent in a sense. And it's funny, actually, we didn't get, um, we got the Daily Bugle, but we didn't get Jonah in this. We kind of thought we would. I, like, we did the predictions that I thought he'd make a cameo, but no we Jonah. We got Jonah, didn't we? He well, was on the TV. He yeah, but him. that's like clearly like it was footage from the last movie, oh, right? Okay, like, yeah. Far, yeah, I meant like, I thought we might get some more like, oh, there's symbiotes in New York sort of thing, right. you know? And uh, they should have too. Like, that's a fucking easy thing to do. And like, it's fan service. But either way, so... They are watching the soap opera <clears throat> and two things happen here, which is very interesting. He's Venom starts talking about like what the symbiotes have seen over the years and what they know and the technology. Maybe that's why Carnage was a hacker, but all the stuff that they've seen in 8,000 years, he's like, Oh, I don't understand what you're talking about. He's like, yeah, you couldn't even imagine. He's kind of like, well, try me. So one thing before we get to the big thing, he started to show him in his mind and then things started to go funky. We'll talk about that, but it's interesting because I think on Marvel Alliance, like, months and months ago when i was still the full-time host check out that show great show with chris and brand but i think there was some fan that sent a question like will we ever get the planet null or king null or whatever it is or what that deal is and Mm -hmm. for me i was like not in this movie and i feel like it might even still be a little too soon for a third one them already and i think i think his name's king null or something like that i know it's the king in black okay yeah so i and i still haven't read it. it's all marvel limited maybe we will do a uh combo it like just recently finished it didn't it they did, and I think right Brent here. had tweeted or he had said to me that the whole run is on Marvel Unlimited oh, or it's nice. about to be. So, I like I said, maybe, maybe we'll call Book Virgins that in the future here soon. Yes, but please. either way, to me, that was like some insinuating of that stuff, in my opinion, of like – because here's the thing, and this is where I'll throw to you. Obviously, you have fucking the detective now, monsters. So he could be like a clear setup for a third villain. But with Carnage, 
let's say presumably gone, you do need some more people. So now with them kind of having the symbiote or Venom talk about, oh, you don't even know what I've seen. To me, it was kind of inferring that sort of King is Black sort of stuff. And it's popular in comic books right now. So like it's something you could run with. I'm not saying it's going to happen in Venom 3, but did you take it that way? Or did you just think it was like, oh, he's just talking about just Venom symbiote's knowledge in general? Um. Yeah, I didn't think King in Black right away. It, it's like it makes sense why you'd think that because he's like the the original, like he's like the maker of the symbiote. He's like the and, Venom God. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And my mind didn't really go there, especially because it's just such a new like comic book run. Um. I I just feel like it's a little. I don't know. I I don't know for whatever reason. I I just didn't think of it. But I also think that any time that we get like a Venom movie. There's just going to be symbiotes. Like, that's like the main villain or the main villain. The uh, villain. There's so many. There's a villain symbiotes out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's well, so many there of go. them. So you could just have like endless villains. Um, mm-hmm. But, and it would make sense if original, like down the line, because you can only do that movie so many times of just they're in San Francisco yes. and then another alien comes. Like, at some point, you actually have to get into the, the brass tacks and get into like their their origin and like where they come from um and especially if it's a venom solo movie if he was just a yeah. spider-man side character it's like oh you might not get to that because he's just busy helping spider-man no, yeah. or fighting spider-man but now like you said you can only fight the symbiote so many times and they have like even the first movie i'm not saying they laid the groundwork but like riot was trying to get back to his home planet right yeah. and they do still talk about space and the planet so it's in the realm of possibility, I think, that we could see this, like I said, maybe not next film, but like we could see this with this Tom Hardy version at some point. That's what I'm kind of saying, I think. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I, I wasn't really thinking of it at the time, but when you just think of them eventually going to have to go to their origins, like yeah. they're going to have to cross paths with the, the King of Black at some point, so. Which would be absolutely insane, and I fuck it. I'm like... Part of me is like super excited. And part of me is so worried just because of what I've seen. <laughs> I'm did worried to, to my boy Cletus. <laughs> At this, he, oh yeah, I don't know who they get him. Fuck, just please go get like Taiko Atiti or something. He killed the free guy, so just make him play the free guy character as King in Black and go from that point. So we'll see. That, that's a theory of mine. People, let me know what you think about that one. And obviously, we got the big Kahona Burger one that we got to talk about. So that's why we're gonna take our probably likely our final ad break as we talk about. Uh, a little Spider-Man action. So we'll be right back. Yeah, we'll do that. And then ratings, then we'll, we'll be done with it. We'll be done. Uh, another Marvel movie in the books. Then we don't got one till November. So I made sure to listen to like the Venom review and just see what my score was. <laughs> Cause I, I know where I, I stand between the two films and sometimes I forget my ratings. So I wanted to make sure I had that one in mind. There you go. Yeah, I can't remember. I think it was for like a six or something. And we're back. So this is you know, obviously we made you wait. Kirkland tried to like uh, rush us to it. He wanted to talk about right up front. So anyway, so we got that whole thing of like, oh, you don't even know what we've seen. So Venom starts to show him some stuff. So at first I thought, okay, they're like the reason the room is like shaking stuff like that because it is something mentally in Eddie that it's just like he's being overloaded with information, right? But and I think they might be trying to do that just to make you think that like or sorry, make Eddie think that at the moment. But what happens is the room starts to shake and then he sits up and then when he sits up, they kind of zoom out. And when they zoom out, the room is not completely different, but quite a bit different as far as the bedding, the pillows, everything. Clearly, he is not where he just was. And on the TV, that's where you hear, like Kirkland was just mentioning, J. Joan Jameson. And he start talking about all oh, the menace known as Spider-Man. And then they show a picture of Tom Holland. So not because we had this whole controversy, right, of in the Morbius trailer, they show a picture of Spider-Man in the back and it says wanted, but it's the Tobe Maguire suit. So everyone was like, what the fuck is going on? This makes no <laughs> sense. Sony just screwed up because they don't know what their Spider-Mans are. But either way, <laughs> so it's a picture of him and it's doing the whole wanted thing. He's Spider-Man. And then Tom Hardy turns into Venom and he's, oh, that guy. And then he licks him. Now, what I thought was interesting well, hang on. I'll get the bad stuff out of the way. I I don't know what the fuck was going on with him licking the TV and stuff. Like, here's the problem to me of what the Venom is now. 
if Venom was it, like, let's say this was a Spider-Man movie, right? And it was we'd never got these Venom movies, and we got this end credit scene for the Spider-Man movie. I go, oh man, Venom's here. They're introducing him. The Venom I know, I don't know why he would be like, oh look at like that guy. Like it's clearly just a fan service. You know what yeah. it is? It's exactly the last movie when Woody Harrelson saying there's gonna be carnage, and that's what <sighs> this is. It's just like, oh that's Spider-Man. You know Spider-Man and Venom, and he licks the TV. It's like this doesn't thematically to me make sense at all. No. Why he would be doing this so that was lame but what i found the most interesting was because we'd always talked about okay if they ever cross over what's going to be the situation how's it happening so it's been a fish to me it's been officially confirmed at least that the venom movie or the venom universe the sony universe is in a different multiverse because i had brought this up with the first one when people were pitching this when they talked to eddie brock about aliens he goes like aliens and he acts surprised if he was in the mcu timeline after 2012 you would never say aliens because they fucking invade new york and kill a bunch of people right <laughs> so i was always like right now this doesn't make any sense so it seems like and it's funny because it feels very like the sounds and the looks now thinking about it retroactively feels very spider-verse ish which is cool and so he has now it seems like went in from the venom verse to the mcu spider-man verse so i have more questions but i just want to get your initial thoughts on this post credit scene uh just what were you thinking as this was going down yeah so just i mean for how like the main movie ended <laughs> i was just like okay I was, hoping, I was I was <laughs> i was hoping for something crazy in the end credit scene and then it, it, it happened when um like they were uh venom was talking to eddie saying like oh you don't even know like your, your brain won't be able to handle all this like hive knowledge that i have <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then and then he says like no i'm ready for it and then as soon as he like it like he says that like this the world starts shaking and I, my immediate thought was just like oh wow he's just he's getting overloaded with information it's like changing mm -hmm. the fabric of space or something and then uh once they i didn't even really realize that the hotel room had changed until like the tv or I think they might make a comment on it, but then the TV went on and then, yeah, you hear J Jonah Jameson's voice. And I, I literally like, I was like at the edge of my seat. I'm like, Holy shit, this is actually happening because it's always something that we've just like talked about possibly happening, like getting this Tom Hardy venom into the, the spider verse. And I was like, one, I'm a little worried just for <laughs> oh, yeah. venom that we oh, have. Oh yeah. But also it's just, it's, crazy to me that i'm gonna have an interaction between you know on the live screen something i haven't seen since spider-man 3 which that wasn't the best version of it yes. <laughs> by any means so we'll see how this one goes but also something that i've i've been thinking about the more i've just like stewed on the the like just the fact that we actually have venom crossing over from his like universe into this universe which is the mcu like there's got to be another venom right in this then let's just call it like the 616 universe of like the sacred timeline the sacred timeline yeah exactly because yeah. like i wouldn't think that they're just making a new venom from his universe because the multiverse has so many like infinite versions of this character so there's got to be you know more carnage more venom out there maybe they're just waiting for contracts <laughs> or something. just saying that to try and pitch to get like a better 100 i am carnage putting it out line. in the universe yeah. to try and like get it going <laughs> well that's where we're going to get our answers because it's interesting that's the same thing for doc ock and green goblin right we haven't met a norman right. in the sacred that's timeline right. we haven't met a dr octavius but they are going to be in this as like obviously the raimi versions but still okay if Norman Osborn in this movie gets defeated and he goes back to the Raimi timeline. Is there an actual Norman Osborn popping along here or does this Norman stay? Because that's the thing. The reason I was like, I understand why they're doing the and thing is there's a good possibility that he never gets back to that timeline, Tom Hardy, which I don't want. I want him to be kicked the fuck back because this, this actually for me. So. When I saw, like, w like when I had a feeling it was going to be Spider-Man, it was more just, like, dread. Because uh, people know me. I The fact that Kevin Feige would have to include these two movies in the MCU continuity timeline is a fucking travesty. This guy has such a great record. Yeah, there's Iron Man 2 and Thor Dark World. But it's, like, those are still good movies. I don't think they are. Like, Venom is way below in a tier. Venom 1 and 2 is below in a tier. So it's just, like, the fact that we're going to have to make these canon for you just to use Tom Holland. I've always said, like, ditch tom holland he's not worth it he's not worth the baggage of like shriek and carnage we want them to be a part of the mcu <laughs> no thank you i really they're don't... killed off so they can't be in there now <laughs> oh yeah exactly yeah there'll be some multiverse version of loki but like have you met shriek before like oh fuck <laughs> but like 
the thing is now with it being a multiverse that's what i like is because you may never see like and like kirkin said they are dead but i'm just saying like you don't have to see those characters because they are secluded to themselves over there the same way like the raimi films the same way as garfield films we suppose so i if we're gonna get it because people always said oh they're just the same universe if we're gonna get it which i don't want them to do but if we're going to I like this way of going about it because, like I said, there will be a reset point. Either it is, and it's funny because Brent has theorized about this before, is saying that he thought there's a good chance that No Way Home could end with Tom Holland ending up in the Venomverse, and now it makes sense too because, like, they are. It's now canon that they're separate universes. You know, like it's canon that they don't, they're, they're not in the same world. So it would be funny. I would hate. That's a fucking terrible trade up. If somehow Tom Hardy sticks around and Tom Hong goes to Venom first, what the fuck did we do to deserve that? But uh, <laughs> no, I think it'd be something like maybe he gets mixed up and goes there too. So this is my next question to you. This end credit scene. Is this a setup for Venom to appear in No Way Home, or is this a setup for Spider Man to appear in the next Venom movie? Because you can't not do this end credit scene and not follow up. They're gonna have to. They officially yeah. did like it is, you know, talking about like we did that date scenario where the girl promises to put out the end. This is the she or he is naked on the bed. It's go time. Like, so it's about to happen. So the question is, does is there a chance that we get a trailer of him of being in Noah Helm in a post or something like that, or is Tom Holland Spider-Man going to be in the next Venom movie? Yeah, I I'm pretty confident it's going to be Venom appearing in No Way Home. Um, just like the timing of the movie release, uh, like the set or not the set photo, just the photo of Tom Hardy wearing the No Way Home hat <laughs> could be anything, right? That, yeah. But I I I think that's just too many things are lining up for it to be that way. Um, but I also don't think that means that Tom Har or Tom Holland won't appear in, in a Venom down the line because of just where like the contracts with Spider-Man and MCU are kind of lying. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but this is supposed to be the last film like with well no, well yes but then technically if, unless something's changed that new contract did say that he had one other spider-man character fuck better not be tom hardy but like <laughs> <laughs> he takes over tom holland's contract well the no but the, like because like uh, we talked about some long time ago marvel alliance where the deal was he was going to appear in his own film and then a crossover again right kind of what they've done but the idea we kind of talked about was well what if it's not tom holland what if it's an andrew garfield spider-man what if it's a Tobey mm. Maguire spider-man like what if what if everything happens in spider-man no way home and goals goes to good but then like let's say Tobey Maguire spider-man is stuck and that's why he's a multiverse of madness or something like that right now again if the deal is that tom hardy's venom is stuck and he's a multiverse of madness and like that that's a raw fucking deal that's not the way to go and at the end of the day maybe i'm wrong i know the movie made tons of money i just talking from a personal standpoint but as far as a contract, we know a Spider-Man characters, presumably Tom Holland has one more crossover appearance. Yeah, and like if I'm trying to put a bet somewhere, I would just say that's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness because it's just, yeah, again, like going off the same multiverse. Yes and no. I think that or we've just heard so like if you had to put a gun to my head i would say it's probably secret wars because i think they've been talking about it way too much yeah. like they've been hinting about multiverse wars and stuff like that the fact that you know which is a good thing at the time this recording black or scarlett johansson and disney have fixed their relationship now they're all good they're making a movie together already it's so funny how money fixes that's all so problems. funny <laughs> but remember those reports a few weeks ago it was like oh the russos you know were maybe going to direct the mcu thing but they were a little tentative after this contract stuff happened one they may retain I just never believed that was going to happen. I believe that they will direct it to that MCU thing. All they would have done is go in the office and say, hey, can we get in writing that you can't do this shit to us that you did to her? Yeah. Great. You know, and like obviously now with them repairing stuff with ScarJo, it shows that they're trying to play ball with their talent. So I think Secret Wars is coming and I think you could save Tom Holland, even if it's three years from now, it doesn't matter. If the contract says it's one more appearance, it's the same way as like technically Ben Affleck has like two more Batman appearances on his contract or something like that. So it's like you could use those, but you don't have to. So right. I could see it even three, four years from now that Tom Holland comes back as Spider-Man in Secret Wars. And what you're saying when you're like, oh, do we have a symbiote? Do we have an Eddie Brock? Well, that's how he got that symbiote was in Secret Wars. So imagine if he were to meet Venom and this is like the nicer, friendlier, like, oh, OK, this is what the symbiote is. And it establishes what the symbiote is. So when he gets it, maybe he doesn't freak out because he's like, oh, well, I saw Eddie have this. He had it under control. I could do that. But in this timeline, 
no, this is what I would hope. My fingers are crossed. This is the symbiote you don't want to fuck with. This is a symbiote that's really going to mess with you. So yeah. there, there's some possibilities there. And it, it's interesting. I'm on the ladder that I actually think this. I don't think Tom Hart. I don't want to like this is such a like a walk in the plank because I feel like I'm committing. And then I feel like in two weeks from now, we'll hear that Tom Hardy's like for sure in no way home. <laughs> My, like like or he'll be in a trailer poster. My prediction is the most he'll be in no way home is an end credit scene. And I think that Tom Holland will be more in a Venom movie, whether it's a Venom versus Spider-Man or a team up. I just think because if Tom Hardy is in Mexico, I think there's a good chance of this multiverse stuff is switching off right now. Right. There's a good chance that while he's like trying to get to New York, that that's when he is fighting this Sinister Six or Green Goblin stuff like that. So he may have that problem dealt with. And then that's when Venom arrives. And I don't know, again, if the Venom movie, the next one's going to take place in the MCU or his verse. But that's my prediction. I'm sticking to it until November's rumored next trailer. I might be completely wrong, but I think you'll get an end credit of Venom, Eddie Brock in No Way Home to set up something. And then in the next Venom movie, because to me, the detective and monsters, that's not a good enough pull. That's not to me. You got to have yeah. like Carnage was. But if you were to make him to be like a big, bad symbiote, but then also say Spider-Man's in that movie, that's a pull. You could have a lesser CD tier villain if Tom Holland's Spider-Man is in the next Venom. Yeah, no, absolutely. Anything else on the end credit scene? Um, Not really. Not really, other than just I want to see what happened to Maximiliano. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's it, Spanish it's, soap opera. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Maybe that's all Venom 3. It's just about that. But no, it's uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting because, like you said, that door is officially kicked down now. You know, like it's it's happening. Yeah. It's always talked about. And that's why I thought because they had, in the press, they're just so like, oh, yeah, it's bound to happen. So right. and even like I think a few days ago, Tom Hardy is like, I can't wait to get involved with this multiverse stuff. It's like, well, dude, you fucking lie. You already are involved in this multiverse. Stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I know he's not supposed to say that, but uh Kirk and Patser, the floor is yours to say any last things about this movie, and if not, your last thoughts and a final rating for Venom, Let There Be Carnage. <laughs> so yeah, Venom, Let There Be Car- Carmudge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's the um, next one. <laughs> you haven't met my brother, Carmudge. God, God, I hope not. <laughs> um, It's like after this movie, I know where this series lies. Like I, I know what the <laughs> standard is. So when we get eventually that third movie like it'll just be my expectations will be yeah. this and that's that's not a good thing i don't think um <laughs> but it also wasn't like completely unbearable hopefully the next one is like a similar runtime um because yes. there's moments in this that like i felt like they should have showed more but <laughs> i don't want to get a whole another hour of <laughs> runtime just for them to like cover those bases um just don't even bring those moments up whether it's like cletus being like you lied. You didn't tell yeah. the whole story. Like, just don't even write that. You know, just have him beating the shit out of Eddie. But nonetheless, I think um, I think I had enough fun with like the the symbiotes on screen and them just fighting and and stuff. But unfortunately, there's just some some pretty bad character moments that I think was enough to bring this one down from the first movie. Um, yeah. Like I, I think also in the first movie, like it was just kind of fun, like seeing how it was gonna happen, like you know, like Venom taking over Eddie, or them just eventually becoming like super, uh, like a symbi- symbiotic relationship. Um, and I think that, like, I think you had even dropped the line, like there was some magic in that from the first movie that we just didn't get in this one because it's like, okay, he's already with Venom, and mm-hmm. then, yeah, just the comedy wasn't there for me. So I. I went back and I listened. I gave, I'm pretty ast- astonished, but I gave the first one a seven. I also had a lot more fun, like yeah. while watching that in the theater. Like I think it was like you, me, Taylor, uh, Dylan was even there, and he it was, was just yeah. we were just all having a good. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't really speak for you. I had a good time. No, we had a good time. I was laughing time. the whole time. Like I said, <laughs> to me, it was like I had a great time until I saw Woody Harrelson and Kratz scene. I was like, oh fuck, this is what this movie is. <laughs> but like, I, I completely bought in. Again, it's, it's yeah. a, a back to the date scenario. It's like having a one night stand and the lights turn on. You're like, oh, this person's not good looking. Okay, yeah. <laughs> time to go. See ya. You know, and that's what happened with Woody Harrelson. I was like, oh shit, this is the future, and here we are. Let there be carnage. We're here in the present now. 
Yeah. <laughs> so like in this one, I went with a buddy and like we were kind of chiming, but I also think he enjoyed it a lot more than me. So like when I yeah. was laughing on how ridiculous it was, he was like, oh, that was kind of funny. So it was kind of funny, like just a funny situation there. Um, I'm probably going to rate this one like a five. Okay. Five, five out of ten. Lower I, than I, think... I thought. I thought you might hit with the six, but a five out of ten. Okay. Yeah, no, like it's I was just debating bordering on five, that fail. I was debating five and a half, but I just can't forgive them with like the character stuff. Like Shriek was such a write off. Um, I'm also just not the biggest fan of like Eddie, like this inter this interpretation of Eddie. Um, mm -hmm. I love Tom Hardy, so I'm really rooting for him. But like, yeah, he just he's so like oofy, which is I guess kind of in line with the character. Like he's kind of a doofus, but at the same time, like there's moments he just seems so clueless and he doesn't feel like this reporter who would have had a hit show and that smart guy and everything <laughs> yeah. like that he feels so aloof and that's because we were talking about in the discord day of like i guess i gave it past because i like tom hardy and i do actually genuinely believe that he cares about this role and the franchise i think he's yeah, a fan he was in dark knight rises he was originally supposed to be rick flag before joel kinnaman but he had to drop out for scheduling issues and squad so he was gonna be in suicide squad as well thank god that didn't happen but then again, he's in this type of shit. But I think he and he has been always promoting like Venom and Spider-Man. Like I like that as far as and that's where I always feel bad when it comes to this, because I love it when you can tell the actors really like the role or the franchise because you feel good. because like, oh, that's like one of us out there and they're doing that. So like, I think he really likes doing this. I think, unfortunately, I just don't like that. I don't like what he likes. I don't have the same taste. You know, it's just like if someone makes a great uh, stuffed mushroom, that's awesome. But I hate mushrooms, so I can't <laughs> appreciate it. But I'm happy they like their stuffed mushroom. Yeah, no, that's that's a good observation just with like uh, Tom Hardy's like enthusiasm for the character. Because yeah. like if you watch him on like the red carpet, like he's just like really like. Yeah, this movie's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he means it. He, yeah, 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 it's just like, and then you get to like a certain moment in the movie where he's like calling out to Anne. And it's just like, I can't believe they wrote that in the, in the movie. And like me having knowledge on how great Tom Hardy can be. It's just like, yeah, okay, he must be a good actor to like play a bad role. <laughs> <laughs> you know because it's like i feel like i could hear that same line in like a b movie on an actor that i've never seen before and be like oh this actor is terrible which is oh yeah probably just a poor observation this isn't bane this Maybe isn't not. the yeah. dunkirk guy this no, is inception yeah. this isn't bronson like it doesn't feel like that guy but it is you know so. it is it is that guy so i yeah. i'm i'm wanting to like him because i just i like tom hardy like you said and i i, I do really like eddie brock as a character in the comics and stuff it's just i'm not loving this interpretation of it and like venom's comedy and stuff but like all in all the ant like the animation of the characters is still top quality and i i do appreciate them for that but so i'm gonna give it a five that's like borderline passing that's like you had to argue with your teacher just to give you that one yeah, extra percent yeah. to get to 50 so you please just... my mom will let me watch <laughs> wrestling tonight if you fail yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, no, and it, that's what's interesting if it is, like, your prediction where Venom or Eddie Brock is fully or at least has some sort of role in No Way Home, I would be very curious to see the MCU team with this Venom because if there's anybody that could get something out of me to like would be this. And it's not that I dislike them, but it's the same way as, like, um, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. I love them so much more when the Russos are writing – or, sorry, when they're directing them and then Marcus McFeely, those are the guys that wrote the Captain America movies and uh, Infinity War and Endgame – when that team has Peter and Stephen Strange, I just prefer them more in those movies, like the way they act. I think they nail a lot more. So that shows that like, and again, I like the versions elsewhere, but it shows if you get another character or creatives, it can't help. I was kind of hoping that was going to happen with Annie Circus, and it didn't. And like for me, my final thoughts, I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to completely keep beating up on the movie like i feel bad enough because like at the end of the day i knew what i was expecting but you know what i would rather have gone and watched this movie and at least had the experience that we did last time where i enjoyed it and then after i felt a little bad like oh like i didn't like this i didn't like this thinking about it but like i didn't have that enjoyable experience and i want to like a, I want to like love a venom carnage movie so i could put that on constantly but this is a movie that i'll watch one more time because emily hasn't seen it but then after that i don't think i have many reasons to return to it other than youtubing like the carnage scenes you know like that'd be about yeah. it if, like i want to see carnage like fuck some people up sure but not the cletus stuff just the carnage thing so um yeah. yeah for me oh boy like this feels low and it feels like a low blow but i just have to do it uh i'm giving it a two out of ten I think that's very similar to what I rated the Suicide Squad in 2016. And I consider that like one of the worst ever. And yeah, for me, I would put this in the 
I don't know if it's a bottom 10, but it's 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 bottom 15, 20 for me. I really like and I think I kind of was even a bit nicer on it during the review. I really did not like this movie. I really did not have a good time with it. And I was kind of disappointed the whole way through. But I think like Kirkland said that I knew that kind of going in. So it lessened the blow. Yeah. I wasn't the whole time like, oh, what are we doing here? It was just like, OK, it was what I feared was going to happen. And then it happened. So that sucks. You know, it's uh <laughs> It, it is what it is. You know, I'll watch the third one. I will watch Morbius. I, like I said, I'll watch season two because you know what? There's going to be a point in time where like Westerns or something like that, where maybe the comic franchise dies out or it's not as big. And I won't even have the chance to watch a bad Venom and Carnage movie. You know, they'll just be the fat will be over. And I hope not. I hope in four years, they're still making all these, but if it is, I'm going to go see these and try to enjoy them. So I thank you, sir, for joining me in this review. It was a good one. We uh, totally. we talked a lot more than I thought. We're almost at two hours. I was surprised. Yeah. But uh, like I said, that end credit scene was juicy. So, yeah, if you liked what we did here, go back. We got Marvel content all the time. We were reviewing What If. We'll be reviewing Hawkeye. We'll be doing Eternals, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, which is now coming up in December. So we're going October. That is, well, when this release is October, so that's, man, three months away. Three months away, and we're going to see fucking three Spider-Men together. Oh, my God. I, that is talk yeah. about a juicy I, review that's gonna be a good one i had to like pinch myself just thinking that like it's actually coming out this year december um you know i guess anything yeah. could happen worst case scenario yeah but they have a they have a date set december what was it 8th or 13th or something like that i think it's the 16th actually oh, 16th. So, okay wrong on both been my third guess <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, of course how, I, I, how could i have not known <laughs> Uh, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And when you hear from us next, we promise you it'll not be boring. See you later.